Are you ready for a pixie book? Come on and listen in! With stories full of wonder, it's time now to begin. <laughs> Hello there, children. It's time for another wonderful story. Oh, Storybook, good to see you again. Oh, that's a good one. Storybook, thank you. It's called The Frog Prince. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far away, there lived a king and a queen and their daughter, the princess, a charming young woman. On her birthday, her royal parents gave her a gift. No, not a drone. Drones didn't exist back then. It was a ball. A golden ball. Beautiful and smooth, made with real gold in it. It magically went up high in the sky when she threw it and shimmered under the sunlight. Oh, how much the princess loved that ball. She played with it every single day with her friends. One day, Quite a gloomy day, actually. The princess went outside as usual to play ball with her friends. They played and played for hours, up until the ball was thrown too high up and fell far away, too far for the players to even see. The princess rushed to search for it. She searched and searched, strong wind blowing in her face and dark clouds gathering above her. And then she saw it! On the edge of a pond, there it was! But oh no, the wind was cruel to the princess that day. It blew the ball over the edge and bloop! Into the pond it went, sinking to the bottom. After all, gold is heavy. The princess was so upset, and for a good reason. Her parents gifted her this beautiful golden ball, and she loved it so, and now, it was on the bottom of this dirty pond. She feared she would never see it again. She stood there near the pond and cried. Oh, what will be of my beloved golden ball? <laughs> How will I tell my parents I lost their precious gift? Oh my! <laughs> Suddenly, she heard a splashing sound when a little frog's head appeared above the water, staring at the princess. And then it spoke. Hello, princess. Why are you crying? The princess was shocked. You, you can speak, but, 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 but you're a frog. The frog nodded. Yes, and you're a princess. But why are you crying? The princess, sniffling and rubbing her eyes, told the frog about her precious ball. The frog paused for a moment, scratching his slimy little chin with a slimy little hand. Hmm, well, if I go down under and retrieve your precious ball for you... The princess's eyes lit up. <gasps> I'd give you anything. Please, please do it. Is that so? said the frog. Look, it's awfully cold and dirty here, and quite hard to find food or shelter. If I get you your ball back, will you let me into the castle you live in, and let me eat dinner with you? The princess immediately nodded her head, her hair getting wet from the rain that began falling down. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, I will, yes, please, please she said, not really thinking it through. Well then, here I go, the frog called out, diving down the pond into its dirty water. The princess was pacing around the pond impatiently while long minutes passed by. Then, suddenly, his head appeared out of the water, and soon after, his hands holding her precious golden ball. He swam to her, placed the wet ball into her waiting arms. There you go, princess. Now I... But the princess didn't even listen. She ran, laughing back to her friends with so much joy, not even thinking about the little frog that was left behind. Hours passed. Then came the evening. The princess was getting ready to sit by the dinner table with the king and queen, her precious ball still in her arms, now cleaned as shiny as ever. 
She was thanking the servant for pulling out the chair for her when she heard a gentle knock on the nearby window. She looked over, her eyes widening. The frog from the pond. Quickly she ran over, opened the window, and let the little frog jump on the window seat. He was dripping mud, scratched and exhausted. The princess immediately apologized. Oh, dear frog, I I'm so sorry. I completely forgot. I left you there in the rain and storm. She turned to her parents, who were looking at her surprised and concerned. Mother, father, this frog here is a friend of mine. He helped me today, and in return, I promised he could come eat dinner at our table. Can he, please? The king and queen exchanged a shocked look. The king said, What? A dirty little frog from outside? Why on earth would we let it in? The princess ran over to her father pleading, Oh, please, father, I promised. Yuck! No! said the queen, clearly disgusted. There is no way that thing sits at our dinner table. Are you insane? This is a dirty, wild creature! The princess cried and pleaded, but there was no use. Her parents would not have it. She took a big coat and went outside, meeting the frog on a nearby bench by the window. Oh, I'm so sorry, my dear friend, she said to him. The frog jumped onto the bench and sat close beside her, his head shaking. Oh, I was so excited to spend the evening inside, away from this rain and the cold, and this dirty, awful pond. I'm so hungry and tired. The journey up here to the castle was very hard. The princess listened closely. Her heart truly went out for the little frog. Poor little thing, she said, bending down wiped a chunk of mud off his slimy cheek and gave it a small kiss. For a quick moment, the only thing she saw was gold fog appearing out of nowhere. And then it was all around the little frog, covering him up. And when the fog cleared, there was no frog on the bench beside her, but a young man. The princess was at a loss for words. What? Uh, how? How? She stuttered in shock. The young man smiled at her and said, I didn't mean to frighten you, princess. I'm sorry. The truth is, I wasn't actually a frog. I'm a prince, and I was cursed years ago by an evil sorcerer. He said quietly, lowering his head. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't tell you before. I was so ashamed. The princess shook her head. No, don't be sorry, but, but how did you turn back into a prince? And the prince told her how the only way to break the curse was an act of pure kindness from a princess. And you did exactly that, without knowing who I really am, the prince said to her, smiling. The king and queen were very confused when their daughter went back inside accompanied by a prince, whom they gladly invited to dinner. The prince and princess became good friends and grew closer every day. And a year later, married in a ceremony by that same pond and lived happily ever after. Oh, what a beautiful tale. Well, children, being truly kind to others can lead you to great things and bring wonderful transformation. <laughs> Don't you think? Bye-bye for now. If you like our stories, don't forget to subscribe.